Hi. So, quite a while ago, I got this HP 1000 A600 system. I pulled it out of the dumpster. As you can see on the top rack, it's super bent up, bent, like bent up, it has a huge dent in here. And the bottom system visually looks a bit better, but when you turn it around, you can definitely see that it's also bent up. So those kind of computers made kind of a rough trip to the dumpster. I want to get those working again and restore, but I think that's shooting a little bit too high. So in today's video, I want to take a look at what actually this system is, because it is not too well documented in the internet. Okay, so I've extracted all the cards from the card cage. And um, I think I, we should take a look at the CPU cards first. And yes, I said cards, there are multiples. So here we have some cards and some of them I even have multiples. So this card here is just one megabyte of DRAM. I have two of those for a total of two megabytes. As well as this is just 512 kilobytes of probably DRAM. Again, I have two of those for a total memory count in the whole system of three megabytes. Okay, so this is the main CPU board. According to Wikipedia, uh, it is based on an AM29000 or 2900 uh, bit slice ALU. Um, it is supposed to be a 16 bit machine, as far as I know. And it has this like funny, one, one of the EEPROMs is connected via a super sketchy ribbon cable. Uh, I don't know how this uh, will impact access times, but um, you know, this. What I first thought would be the Spitzlice CPU would be this, but this is actually a bunch of Hitachi um, microcontrollers based on a 68, Motorola 6800. So I haven't really figured out how this CPU work or the CPU board works. But anyway, let's put this aside. Also, what I have kind of find out a mystery is I have this board which is called Serial and I have this called board which is called Max. So the Max board, as long as or like as much as I would think, um, would provide me with serial ports. Also, those Silog serial controllers would give that away or RS232 serial, right? Well, what is this serial port here? It has like an, an edge connector and then it has this very specific HP, I think those are for uh, optical thing. And I have like a bunch of those. Like I have like four boards of those serial boards, as well as I have four MUX boards. Then lastly, we have like some special boards. So we have an HPIB board, which is very typical for an HP computer. Then I have another HPIB board, but this one is set up for, or as it says here, uh, this card can be configured for high speed operation, see reference manual. So that means that this card can be used in, in HPIB high speed mode, which I have never seen uh, anything that can like operate with that. We have a normal MFM controller for, uh, for, for a hard drive. And I think this one is also the one that looks most disgusting. I now loosen the screws on the cabinet to get out the power supply. <laughs> and here's the power supply. So it's a kind of cool system. You can plug in that plug on the 230 or 115 volt um, plug to set the voltage. It's very cool. And there's a connector in the back that connects the low voltage to the back or in that case, more like mid plane. Okay, so, um, I have now emptied all the cards and I uh, have this empty chassis. The chassis, as you could see in the last video, also has a power supply in the front here, which I also extracted, taking a look at it. Looks good, should be fine. And I've, um, I've, cleaned, I've cleaned it somewhat and it still has a little bit of, like it still makes this shape a little bit. It has got an impact. And I need to correct myself because after looking at the cards, I couldn't figure out how to put the cards in because it didn't make sense. So we were researching it more and more and I thought I had an A600. I had to realize I actually have a HP System 1000 A400. 
This is an A400, not an A600. So that's a difference. Um, that has different CPU cards and uh, does not support ECC memory, which is fine. I don't have ECC memory, obviously, anyway. But um, what I want to do now is I want to plug it into some power and look if the power supply turns on. I figured out that when you want to turn on the power supply like this, uh, you kind of need to load it down. So I've got some vacuum tubes and I hooked up the heaters to the vacuum tubes to the respective terminals. So now I need a power cable. So I have this power cable and the system should be turned off. And when I plug it in, nothing should happen, which it did, nothing happened. Actually, before we do that, let's get some power, uh, let's get some uh, voltmeters. Yeah, exactly, I need some voltmeters. So I got two multimeters out. This one should measure five volts and this one should measure 20 volts. So let's get my thing back, my power plug, plug it in and then look what happens. So this should turn on the voltage. <laughs> oh yeah, it seems to work. Okay, so this is perfect. The five volt line measured five volts and the, the other 12 volt line measured 11.9 something volts. So that's actually good. That's very good. I am very happy that the power supply works and everything and also the fan spun up. And uh, in the next video, we will put some cards into this and we will look if it if it, if we can get it working if you like this video so please give it a like and if you don't want to miss the next episode um please subscribe um also i stream on twitch and follow my bandcamp for my music all the music in this video you hear is also made by me uh, thank you so much for watching i'll see you next time have a good one i'm out and bye